gas till I pass out. Pass Want me out. to fuck y'all, respect y'all, all that ass all out. That ass all that flexing make me cash out. Cash out. Kids, the cash flow is the cash cow. Told a bitch I wasn't tricking that she mad now. How much was you expecting that you pass from? All these hoes selling pussy, it's a fan now. What you gonna do when your little daughter see that profile? I ain't preaching, but we gotta do better. Understand, do what you gotta, but you ain't gotta forever. But there's no progression. Something not resurrecting, gotta interpret it different. You ain't getting the message. No pain is the medium, put it all in perspective. All Sometimes perspective. the same instructions lead a different direction. Different direction. Life says bait, don't be the one that it catches. One that it catches. And life ain't felt, don't be the one that ain't you know, felt. I'm at three times. Putting out good music. Hey, that young boy, hey, what's going on, man? Heard you didn't show up for the show in uh, South Carolina. Man, that, 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 one, that was a fucking death trap. You know, they, they, it was one fucking door. They didn't even have a back door. Yeah, man, but you know, you gotta, ah, man, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta make these shows, man. We set you up for these shows and, uh, you gotta make them, man. Uh, you know, that, that's part of your contract. So, uh, we're going to put you down here in, um, Mobile, Alabama. It's, it's kind of a small club and stuff and they got, you know, kind of relaxed security at the door, but got a lot of fans down there, man. So yeah, we're going to go to book, book you for that tomorrow. I, I'm, I'm in, I'm in Paris. Yeah, okay, well, we'll put, book you for that tomorrow night, then. Let's go ahead and get you on a plane. We'll go ahead and get that, uh, put the jet out there for you. All right, see you later. Man. Hello? 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 I pull up. Blowing good perk, got the hook up. Nigga want a verse, we can hook up. Perk make it hurt, got my foot up. When your flow gang track hurt enough. My flow gang cash you, peanut. They want to hear how I started from the bottom. Beating on the cafeteria table with my homies, eat free life. But never mind that, don't remind me on the path Why I fuck around, have a little flat back Good boy from the hood, like really from the hood What the reef doing numbers like good crack See now we on the road, and now we take a trip She can hold my trap phone till I get back Just keep that bitch jumping and keep that bitch pumping It's funny, I know you gon' love it Make a little paper then flip Did you know that becoming a rapper Is the number one cause of death amongst young black men? Have you ever wondered why the incarceration and murder of rappers is so accepted and somewhat celebrated amongst today's society. Today, we're going to explore an example of this phenomenon. Welcome to The Rap Trap, hosted by A.O. Conseco. Right here. Um, seeing shit from different sides of the spectrum. Um, but, welcome to The Rap Trap. I am A.O. Conseco, fearless leader of AO Nation and the Men Too Movement. And this is Travel. That was Travel. Uh, in hindsight. Today, obviously, we're speaking on um once again, NBA Young Boy. What 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 a development that we have. Um I don't know how much more evidence needs to be put forth um, for niggas to understand that this is this game this rap industry music industry as we now know it and of course niggas in the comments are gonna say oh, man it been like that it been fucked up as we see it right now moving forward um, little niggas ain't gonna give a fuck about what you say happened back then it's about right now and this is right now evidence. Now we see, we just saw Tory Lanez uh, talk about, who was that? Fuck with that, who was that, was that Atlantic? Who the fuck was Tory Lanez talking about? But Tory Lanez just came out and threatened his label. And then now, and now, I wonder if y'all heard that. I wonder how I wonder how good this mic is. I wonder if y'all just heard the uh, that thunder. But now we have NBA Youngboy coming out saying, "I asked the label man, look man, I give y'all the next four albums free, dog. Then let me get my masters, man. Then let me get the master, dog." The way I took that was that, look man, y'all can have everything I do from this point forward. Just give me my masters from 
what I've previously done. You know what I'm saying? Four albums. If that don't tell you nothing, I don't know what to I don't know what to say at this point. I'll give you four NBA Youngboy albums <laughs> if you'll give me my masters. And what this tells anybody with a mind, first off, what this tells anybody with a mind is, nigga, we don't think, like, nigga, everything you get from this point forward is just extra. Nigga, we don't, and, and nigga, we don't, we don't bend, we don't break, we don't compromise. After a while, the folk won't tell you goddamn we don't negotiate with terrorists. Because in this game, a nigga trying to get a fair deal is a fucking terrorist. Anybody that goes up against the the um, the status quo, the system that is in place, going against that a revolution, no matter how righteous it is, those are terrorists. This is how we live. You go over there to fucking um, where's that boy um, uh, uh Napoleon from? What what he live in Egypt somewhere? Um, and he said over there. You can't if if drinking alcohol is illegal. Obviously, we you, any drug activity that's punishable by death. You get what is it, five hundred lashes? Um, uh, if you caught drinking or some shit like that. Um, going over that motherfucker and telling people or, or trying to you know start some shit where you can smoke weed outside, they're gonna look at you as a fucking terrorist. We don't rock like that over here. And over here in this industry, we're not into giving artists uh, deals that work for them in the long run. We're here to have you shining, which is gonna help us, because you gotta shine, that's part of the rap trap. Let me break it down for those who may be new. The rap trap states that everything that you have to do to get on, is all of the things that's going to keep you from living a long, free life. A long, rich, free life. You got to go out this bitch and show guns out in the videos and shit like that as a felon. You got to go out this bitch and show money. Stupid jewelry around this motherfucker. But you can't protect yourself with weapons. And if you get security, then you a bitch. You have to taunt the robbers while not having anything to protect yourself from them. If you do, then you always have to worry about the ever prevalent hip hop police that just get their rocks off by busting big rappers. Can't forget the bitches. And in the biggest scheme of it all is your death or imprisonment works for the label. At that point, look at Pop Smoke. Pop Smoke looking to do, what is it? Uh, damn near 300,000 copies first week. The best promotion for your album, project, streams, career, at that point in time, is your death. Nothing will be as good, good as promotion, good Nothing will promote you as well as your death will. Labels caught on to that shit and then they started. Why the fuck are we fucking with these conscious lyrical motherfuckers that are never going to be in the belly of the beast? Let's go ahead and start signing dropouts that come from a broken home that don't have a good understanding on life that are in beef at the time of their signing and will bring in medical people, psychologists, um, fucking brain surgeons, anybody who can detect mental illness, bring them in these meeting rooms where niggas start dancing on tables. In those interview rooms, we're gonna have doctors dressed up as music executives and they're gonna diagnose them right then and there. The higher the diagnosis, the more money we'll give them. Because we know that they're going to fuck this shit up. Everything we give them, they're going to they gonna owe us anyway. So it doesn't matter. But we know that the more insane this motherfucker is, the more attention he'll have. Furthermore, the more money he'll generate. 
because his name is going to stay in the headlines. It is a trap from the very fucking beginning. If you go out this motherfucker and just live up, you know, I'm just in the house. I'm doing the Kanye West shit. I'm out here in Wyoming putting out good music. Hey, hey, young boy. Hey, what's going on, man? Heard you didn't show up for the show in uh, South Carolina. Man, that, that, that one, that was a fucking death trap. You know, they, they, it was one fucking door. They didn't even have a back door. Yeah, man, but you know, you gotta, ah, man, you got, you gotta, you gotta make these shows, man. We set you up for these shows and, uh, you gotta make them, man. Uh, you know, that, that's part of the contract. So, uh, we're gonna put you down here in, um, Mobile, Alabama. It's, it's kind of a small club and stuff and they got, you know, kind of relaxed security at the door, but got a lot of fans down there, man. So, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and book, book you for that tomorrow. I, I'm, I'm in, I'm in Paris. Yeah, okay, well, we'll put, book you for that tomorrow night, then. Let's go ahead and get you on a plane. We'll go ahead and get that, uh, put the jet out there for you. All right, see you later. H hold up, hello? Hello? If you don't get killed at that show, something's going to happen. Yeah, hey, man, just call him back. Make sure that you stay on stage for at least 30 minutes. Huh? Oh, oh, sorry. Hey, sorry, man. An hour and 30 minutes. Yeah, it's going to be an hour and 30 minutes. Okay, see you, man, when you get back. All right. You want me to stay in a fucking club with high, drunk, poverty-stricken, mentally ill people for an hour and a half? We're not talking about stadiums. We're talking about hole in the wall. Book you for a show um, with the motherfuckers that you're beefing with. It's in their best interest for you to die because as I told y'all, there's going to come a time they know this. There's going to come a time in every musician's career that they wisen up. They get hip to the game and they're going to say, told my label, man, hey, man, by the time you start talking about I told my label, it's too late, my nigga. I've been trying to speak to niggas and tell, hey, my nigga. The label ain't going to, uh, the label, but you over there, yeah, fuck nigga, we got plenty of other, fuck nigga, 100,000 on my pinky ring, fuck nigga, yeah, this a real AP, fuck nigga, you know what it is. Two years later, yeah, man, I, I went and told my label, man, uh, man, I'll give you my next four albums, man, just let me get my masters, man, so I can have some, I got a family, yeah, hey, um, not gonna be able to do that, man. Um, but hey, man, I loved your last project. Uh, still flexing, still stepping. Hey, man, uh, can't wait to hear the next seven. Whoa, ho hey, hold, hey, yo, yo. I I was signed for ten albums in all. I've already given you six of them. Hey, that's sometimes, man, we got to read the fine print. There was actually a, a, a junction in there. There was an, a, an adjustment um, of saying that if you did this many numbers, then it would go on for an extra three albums. Yeah, if you just look on page 17, article 51, it says right there, if artists should stream over a million streams uh, within four years, then your, um, your original, uh, um, number is going to be, um, added. They're going to add to it three more. You got to excuse me, man. I'm over here with, uh, you know, with, with, with the new artists that we're, we're dealing with and stuff like that. But yeah, so you got, um, got a couple more to go, man. And, and, and we just can't wait to hear them. All right. See you later. And, and you remember when, when you first came in, 
those conversations with the labels were a lot more laxed. A lot more, you know, you had a lot more to say. <laughs> they listened to you more. At this point, when they start hitting you with that type of shit, you understand that you're on your way out. You know what I'm saying? They knew. The labels knew that with all the promotion they give you, with everything that they do for you, you're only going to last a certain amount of time. They were actually planning for you to be dead by now. If I could remember to do it, there was a video of NBA Youngboy. I need to compile a whole fucking series of artists getting ran up on by fans. If there was a nigga who was beefing with young boy and he had the same drop that this fan did, we will be having an XXX Tentation on situation. And in a lot of cases, dog, when you look at how these artists are going out, it's like, man, it probably would have been better for you, your legacy, if you would have went out like that. Because now you got motherfuckers doing pizza commercials and, and you know, and, and doing reality TV shows just to make ends meet because everyone was fucked over by the label. No one got a fair deal. This isn't the game of fair deals. If you got a fair deal, no one knows you. The label isn't going to start working for you unless they gave you a fucked up deal that they're going to benefit with everything. If they not getting the majority of the money, why in the fuck is they working? Nigga, do, you, do your shit, man. You a tax writer, I will not give a fuck about you. We pushing the niggas that we got under fucked up, not 360, 720. Like, nigga, you not gonna win. And a nigga, when he go and ask the label for, you know, hey man, let's, hey, can we do something more fair? It's usually when they realize my numbers have started to go down because you're going to have that guy too. The analyst, the number analyst. Like, yeah, man, we down 72 fucking percent. I'm not just on streams, on shows, on internet interaction. And this is when motherfuckers start doing weird shit. Weird shit. And then you understand that if we just talking about it in a, you know, celebrity situation yeah motherfuckers who died in their prime you know as far as legacy goes like yeah that, that they they better off because now you out this bitch just you know looking bad you know what i'm saying because foreclosure repossessions because you were thinking that this money is going to come like this forever you see what boosie doing If Boost is smart, this nigga will downsize. When motherfuckers start looking at, you know, what's going on and like you you're you're as accessible as you are, yeah, you a legend. You a legend like a motherfucker. Gucci with downsize. It's only gonna get worse. As motherfuckers get more and more used to you. It's only going to be less and less sales, less and less sales. You can do. Yeah, it's smart to go sign artists and, 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 and what you learn to do is do what the fuck the labels did. Squeeze them niggas to death. Go find you a young nigga and just use your celebrity and squeeze the fuck out of them. But best believe in a couple years, he going to say, hey, Gucci. Hey man, ain't no way we could uh, you know, I holler at you, man, and, and you know, he gonna come to the internet, internet like, man, I thought Gucci was a real nigga, dog. Come on, dog, you got me in that bullshit ass contract, dog. Come on, man, let me get my masters. Because they didn't got hip to the game, they got fucked over. Now they getting hip to it. So at this point, the best thing for NBA young boy to do, one of y'all heard that. Best thing for him to do is find him a young artist. You know what I'm saying? Find you a young artist, brand him. And, that's, and then you just restart the shit. You know what I'm saying? So now, what you become as the slave, 
you become a slave catcher, not a slave master. You're a slave catcher. You go get you a young nigga and walk him into the label so they can fuck him over the same way they did you. A real nigga would break the fuck away from that label, cut the ties completely, and start his own company and do the shit the right way. If he claims he doesn't like the way he's being done, but a nigga won't do that. In this music business, this shit is so fickle. It's so fickle that you'll start justifying shit the same way that the label justified what they did to you. Like, hey, yeah, you know, I, I, I'm getting the majority of the money and, and yeah, he getting fucked, but he got celebrity and he can, if he know what he's doing, he can monetize that celebrity and still make money. But you know that you fucking him and you start thinking like the label again. He ain't doing shit. I'm the one getting him an interview with this, this person and this person. Let's mark my words. You will start seeing more NBA young boy interviews. He's going to get more vocal. Now he's going to start, you know, coming down to this level and talking and explaining shit. And you're going to start, oh man, damn. But before that, it's, yeah, fuck nigga, you see what it is, my nigga? Yeah, nigga, we having this shit, y'all broke ass nigga. The fuck you think this is, nigga? Yeah, we having this shit, nigga. Yeah. Now he coming in, bitch, no jeer on. Man, yeah, I, I, you know, I, I'm an average person. I go I go to Winn-Dixie and Walmart like everybody else, man. I just want, you know, you don't want to live no average life, man. You trying to get uh, support so niggas can go and ride on the label like motherfuckers did for um, Lupe Fiasco. And this is when you find out whether or not you have a real support system. When you are in trouble with your label, will your supporters... Now, you know what? This is crazy because... Will your supporters go and, and really campaign for you and really put that in for you? They'll do it now, but if you don't come out right now and say you need that type of help and wait until it's down the line and your next album come out and it's bullshit, you're only going down from here. For them to say your last album was that fucked up like that, it's saying that they're they're unplugging from the matrix. You're not holding, you're not retaining their attention like you used to. It's like Boosie. Anything Boosie put out, it was, yeah, because it was Boosie. But at this point, it's like, yeah, you know, the old Boosie. Yeah, 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 the old Boosie, you know what I'm saying? And now it's happening while you're still out here. There's only a few options, few ways to go from here and all of them are downhill. The issue is that artists, for some reason, you feel like you're going to be different from all of the rest of the artists out here. They're not allowing any more Kanye's, Rick Ross, T.I., Drake, Wayne, Nicki Minaj. Th th those were the last of that era. Future may have got in, may have. But after that, it was the end of that. Any nigga, bitch, you see popping, they have a hold on them. Any, and that's why I can give the baby credit. I believe the baby will have enough sense. Back to the point. My only issue with him ever was the faking shit. He was doing what he had to do in the rap trap. You can't come in on no talent shit. You have to come in on some game shit. And I, at that time, that's what I was on. Like, this nigga's not like that. I was, I did, I was showing you how to identify niggas who are lying. And it just turned into some old other shit. But I can respect it because it looks like he's about to transition into something else. The music business is just like YouTube. You come in on that, but you better transition use the music business as your platform this is a trampoline this is your starting point this isn't everything you, you shouldn't be looking to retire off of fucking youtube you should be here to promote what else you have the other talents that you have whether it's 
nigga, food, nigga, uh, a lawn care service, acting, a uh, production company, whatever the fuck it is, you better, as soon as possible, start putting those dollars, not into jewelry, but into what you're going to make your real money off of. That YouTube shit is sweet, but it's coming, it's going to come just like the music contracts with too many motherfucking restrictions. Only a certain demographic is going to make those, you know, those dream numbers that you see. You have to be a certain, and, and if you're not in that demographic, it's not going to work. And even if it does work, that can only work for a certain amount of time. So for you to sit there, oh, I got, I got it, man. It's all I'm in the game now. Huh? You fucking up. And going ahead and starting to make these purchases like you see Drake do. You're going to kill yourself. You're going to kill yourself. And this is what I've always spoken on. If your whole persona is based off of you being a gangster or you being rich. If that's what your whole shit is, you're not going to last long. Because you have one situation for the label to send a motherfucker and a cameraman. This a cameraman can just be a motherfucker with a phone. Pay a junkie $20, put some clothes on them, tell them to say, fuck you, in your face. Get them a backstage pass. Fuck you. And motherfucker going, oh, that nigga ain't about that shit like that. They just killed it. They can kill that shit at any point in time. And they'll do that just so you have to come back groveling. Yeah, you know, my, my album ain't selling like you used to after that whole situation. If you don't think a small five second clip can change a motherfucker career, I suggest you go back and look at motherfuckers. Look at situations that happened and you never looked at that artist the same way ever again. If I'm telling you this, this is something that the labels already know. This is their, they know everything about this. This is how they make their millions. They know everything about it. How to bring an artist up, how to make his run last longer than it's supposed to. So that's how to sustain it and then how to end it. If you think that these CIA agents at the top of these labels that go out to these golf courses and take money from private prisons, Michael Jordan, uh, Big Pharma, um, Big Tobacco, different alcohol brands, and anyone who profits off of the death and destruction of young black men of the black warrior class, if you think they're above paying somebody to kill one of their rappers to make their streams go up to 300,000 in the first week, I don't know what to tell you, my nigga. I don't know what to tell you. I just made a post last night. I woke up out my sleep to make this post. Uh, it was of Ham, the first chimpanzee. chimpanzee. Yeah. Sinus in my shit. I don't want to say it whether it's you know the 19 or not because I don't even want to play like that But it was a picture of him and his trainers around him. Just like, you know Yeah, it's all good and the shit said at times motives matter more than actions The label will do for you and they'll smile but they can give a fuck about their whole thing is to put you to put a huge target on your back and you look at it look at what's going on with pop smoke i have to speak on that also so i won't go too far but look at jay dill well i can't say jay dill because i don't but it's just you can just look at him just to see like if and but you can also look at it and see if you not with a label you dying, shh, motherfucker gonna be out this bitch, just, you know, looking around his project, might do something, might not. You know what I'm saying? But the labels have mastered 
monetization of dead rappers. They know how to monetize that shit. There's a reason. <laughs> the hologram shit. It came off of the deaths of I he's dead, but I still want to see him. There's a market for dead. Oh shit. Look, let me get my tech guy. It's that easy. Just me, man, when, when, when situations come up, I always, I'm just somebody who looks at the money. The money is always the motive in, in my eyes. I'm just looking at what, and I've seen the evil that men will do. For money, seeing what I would do for money. So when you give motherfucker these type of resources, and then they're bringing in, I'm talking about just niggas that you can just pick. You can go to California right now and find a rusty, dusty, just Roddy Rich, Lil Baby, go anywhere. And they can make them a star because they have the, the Cardi B power. I was talking to somebody and I told them, I don't give a fuck who I can learn from a dog, from a rock. I can learn from a, a trick. I can learn from a, you know what I'm saying? Any walk of life. When 6 9 speaks about motherfuckers buying number ones, I listen. It's kind of like you go to your homeboy house and he, and he beefing with his girl and they yelling at each other and she, you know, I'm on your side, but I'm still listening for what she's saying. Let's say they don't know I'm at the door. I'm listening. Not eavesdropping, I'm listening. If I'm eavesdropping, I'm eavesdropping. I'm listening. Information will save your life. So when Takashi talks about shit that I've already spoken about, as far as how do we know that Cardi B is how do we know that she makes good music? How do we know that we should listen to her? Because we as Americans, more than anybody, we love a winner. We love a winner. If you number one, oh my God, I just love her. Do you know pop culture? Pop culture, it, it, it's amazing. You'll always have those, you know, ah, those white girls in front of whatever boy band insert boy band here and with that is gonna come oh, oh my white girls and that's how we know and so cardi b she's a winner ah oh. and then when you start looking at the behind the scenes shit of hollywood six nine the scene shit that i haven't seen so i'm listening i'm listening for shit that he's seen and i'm listening for names because i can use this name okay that's who that is a motherfucker can give you information without even knowing that that's something that you needed. This is why a motherfucker has to pay. I have to know that we finna make a transaction before I even get on the phone with you because accidentally I'm gonna just I'm gonna be talking and you gonna get game. You know I, I say well you you know with the flyers you do I'm supposed to get flyers. Yeah you know you gotta have a CD CD still. Oh damn. You can do that on your phone? Oh, you know what I'm saying? So I listen. I know how important it is. I don't give a fuck. Now, when you start talking to me, I'm the, you know, king of New York, my music, I don't, I'm listening for the concrete shit. So when we know that you can buy a number one, which I wouldn't doubt that these record labels collectively own billboard and they just take turns every year letting their artists be number one because unlike us they can work with their enemy to make money we can't do that we can't work with our homeboys to make money look at that bullshit so it's the same shit man it's the same shit over and over NBA young boy 
is going through what every artist will. Little baby, it's not going to be long. Go ahead and take this clip out. Little baby will get to beeping with QC because there's going to come a time where it's like, I'm a boss. You know, niggas then started falling off the little baby shit, and now I'm not, you know, just popping as I was, and now I want to go look at my contract. Oh, man, it's in everything. It's in everything. It's And so when an artist come out with this rah-rah shit, this is what I'm telling you. Hey, man. And I, I saw a nigga in my comments say, that's why I tell people it's nine, to, it's nine to five workers that make more than the average rapper on contract. And if you split that shit up, probably is. And probably will live better because after an artist has lived that lifestyle for that long, and then if you if you if on paper it they probably do because you take in taxes and IRS and what they owe and shit like that, you probably are more valuable because they probably in the negatives with the shit that they owe. Haven't been paying it. Now you got this payment on this fucking mansion to where if you would have got a humble home in a suburb somewhere, but you just had to, you know, flex on motherfuckers because, and they made sure that that's the type of person that you would be before they signed you. They had fathers that, that were in the stock market, um, had been raised in a, they had shit growing up. They're, they're used to this lifestyle. And so there's certain things that you learn growing up over there that over here, motherfuckers been living off the state their whole life. My first home is a fucking mansion. How the, and there's no 18 year old, 25 year old that will be able to deal with this type of money the right way. And it's, and, it, and you're coming from such a contrast they're coming from the suburbs all together. For, they, they, they're already there. So they're already at five. We're coming from zero and going to 10. They're going from five to eight. It was a gradual rise. We're thrown to 10 from zero at 18. It's a trap all together. So we're just dancing monkeys. And those of us who choose to become slave catchers for the slave masters are even worse than the slave masters because you know what the fuck they're about to do to the slave that you walked in the door. And that's why I tell you, motives are more important than actions. Man, he walked me into the label, bro. And he walked me into the label, bro. I know that's a real nigga until you actually see the contract and then you find out that he was paid to sell you to them. The nigga, young boy said, I, I offered them my next four albums. They know that your shit goes nowhere but down from here. They know that your first two was the only thing that really mattered. And they gonna make money off that shit forever. Your first two, just like every artist, after that, uh, uh, your first two is all that matter, but they got you for goddamn eight albums. But you were sold up that bit flexing. Now you done did the fucking, the, the, the math, and you see you're not going to be able to afford this lifestyle for two more years. You finna have to start selling shit. In three years, motherfuckers will definitely know if that they'll definitely know that you in financial trouble. You thought you was ahead of the game by hollering at them right now, not knowing that the day you signed. No, actually, nigga, two weeks before they signed you, a month before they signed you, they knew that at this point, you would talk like this. They knew it wasn't gonna work. They knew that you would wake up just like every artist they did that to before you. But you come in the game, just like how we come in the street. You come in the game thinking, ah, oh, nah, them niggas don't goddamn, they ain't got it like me. They ain't doing it like I did in my knee, they, we on a whole nother level. And then you get did the same way. You get the same charge. And you sitting down with those legends. 
and you start looking at the similarities between how they did a sweep 20 years ago and how they did it today. The same type of way that they did the sweep, they found the informant, they sent the goddamn uh, 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 CI through there, he got the whole layout, then they did a whole countywide fucking sweep. They do this shit every fucking six months, every fucking generation, like clockwork. But when you come in the game, you think, oh, no, nah, them niggas weren't smart enough. I got a whole nother plug. You think these niggas ain't have a Mexican plug? You think these niggas ain't never had a Chinese plug? You think they ain't had a Jamaican plug? But you feel like you did so different because, yeah, I'm fucking with a nigga down there in Florida. I got a Haitian. So I know I'm goddamn, you know what I'm saying? Them niggas ain't rocking like I'm rocking. Them niggas weren't smart, bro. They weren't smart. And that's the same way a rapper would talk about a rapper who got fucked up in his deal prior. You think them old niggas, yeah, they weren't coming like that. No, I got real fans. Every generation had fans. It was fans. It was motherfuckers. Oh, man, you know, bitches dropping. But you just feel like, oh, no, nah, it's just me, my nigga. It's all me. And you wasn't a student. You wasn't a seeker you wasn't looking for signs and studying the game and so now when the shit hit you it just hit you off from the blind side and now you asking yeah man you know you going online with this shit man i asked the label man if, if, if you know i i told him shit i get the next four album for free you know just let me get my master man that, that's all i'm asking for man that's all i'm asking man this is dirt they still said no bro it's a dirty game, bro. You know, I ain't asking for y'all to help me or nothing. I'm just saying, I didn't want to tell y'all how dirty the game is. What the fuck? So this ain't the same shit that, let's, for example, let's say maybe Joe Budden was talking about and y'all niggas, you know, said he was hating? Fuck if you like Joe Budden. Fuck if you like academics. If these motherfuckers are giving information on what's going on, why in the fuck when you take it? That's free game on the table. Just... For anybody to get. Nah, man, them niggas ain't coming like this. Them niggas ain't cut like this. Them niggas, man, them niggas lame as fuck, bro. Them niggas ain't have it like this, bro. Them niggas ain't never had no goddamn pain like this, bro. And now you out this bitch asking for sympathy. And, and this the game, man. And, and so I, I, I hate it when an artist start talking about how fucked up the labels is. As if this hasn't been the conversation for I don't know how long. Why would it, you you know some motherfucker saying that uh, they thought NBA uh, young boy was uh, he ain't have no label and shit like that and I, I've told y'all if you're gonna work on this scale you have to be tied in give a fuck what a nigga say about whatever the fuck a nigga say the labels know everything you know is just like this the same shit dog just like the police if the streets know that goddamn that 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 yo the one who killed goddamn uh Phil and them. The police know it. Mother, it ain't tied like that to what shit. You know, we, we know it. Everybody in the street. How the fuck is a nigga? I don't even know who the fuck this nigga is. Well, yeah, well, I know you put that good work in. How the fuck do this nigga know what the fuck? How he know what the fuck going on? So it's the same shit. Like, the labels know. They know that people don't like artists on labels. So they'll do a behind-the-back deal because it looks better for the artist for him to be independent. If he looks independent, people are more apt to, to deal with him because, yeah, he the underdog. But the whole time, they on contract on a 360. Just like everybody else. So that's what this whole thing is. So what I want, the reason why I bring shit to the forefront, I'm not going to keep coming on this bitch every time I'm this, this. I'm not doing all them fucking stories. What I'm saying is, when it's something that ties into and gives credence to how I'm telling you, learn from this. I'm telling you, learn from what's going on. You see, here, NBA Youngboy is about to go downwards. That still flexing, still stepping, horrible reviews. He's on his way down. Just like I told y'all, the reason why I feel that the baby will do better than NBA Young Boys because the baby, he was a fake nigga from the jump. From the jump he was. I, and I, that's all that I spoke to y'all about. This nigga is not who the fuck he say he is. But because of that, he'll get in the game and he'll be able to go into movies. He'll be able to go into uh, hosting the BET Awards and shit like that. Because this is a game for fake niggas. This is where they thrive at. But 
the niggas who come in this bitch and you know, nah, I'm real nigga, my nigga ain't uh, fuck all that dumb shit. You really real like that? You gonna get murdered or sent to prison immediately because that's not what's going on. Everything back here is a fucking facade. You come back, back this motherfucker trying to be real, you gonna end up like Rallo, finesse two times, list goes on, list goes on, list goes on. Just name a fucking rapper. You real and you coming to this motherfucking fake ass game. You going to prison or you going to die? Ain't nobody back this motherfucker real but you. So, understand that this rap trap is all encompassing. It's not just bitches. It's not just robbers. It's not just police. And it's not just the labels. It's everything. And when you look back at what you have after putting all that work in, like damn you feel like a fucking athlete uh, my NFL insider said we should start telling our young black men that sports is more of a vocation than a career because the average career um, of a athlete a football player is four years you came in the league at 24 let's say 24 23 24 Four years, you're 30 years old. Let's just say 30 years old. You had a good career, 30 years old. You're getting that little pension money, but every motherfucker ain't this Hall of Fame and all that shit like that. Depending on your bills, you might have to, you know what I'm saying? So, you've been training your whole life for four years and still have a whole life to live. This is why niggas start selling dope. This is why niggas, NFL players start robbing. Cause you didn't went this big on this house, this car, cause you just cause you never had shit. And the money just ran the fuck out. And now you having to acclimate back into regular society. And you're dealing with your ego on top of that. Because it's like I'm a I'm a celebrity and I'm having to go out here and cut grass. I'm having to go out here and so I think he was saying something about, you know, take your college serious because that's going to be what you fall back on if you get injured. If something should happen to where they're going to come with another fucking athlete, the NFL is not going to stop with you and the rap game is not going to stop with you. So understand that you do not need to be thinking that it's here now, and it's always going to be here. NBA Youngboy got a pass for having herpes. Mark my words, they're going to start bringing that shit and throwing it in his face. When girls used to fucking, I don't, you know what I'm saying? they going to start, I, I don't want that herpes. You're going to start seeing it. Right now, you don't see it publicly. You're going to start seeing it. And this is how the game does you. You thought it was love. It was a facade. You should have been thinking about you and you only from the jump. Not trying to appease everybody getting a house big enough for your whole fucking city. Stop trying to compete with Drake them. Your deal ain't set up like his. Stop trying to compete with Sauce Walker and Amigos with them diamonds and shit like that. Your shit ain't set up like theirs. You need to be trying to make your shit last as long as possible. If you got a cousin, a brother, a family member that has a business idea, not a fucking Brightland idea, you need to drop your goddamn Lambo, my nigga. No, a business idea. Hey, man, I, I got, I already got my thing rolling. Um, I wash cars. I fix cars. I just need me a shop, man. Uh, I can get you a payment plan to get your money back, man. But I, this startup money, I, that's all I need. You want to shoot that nigga to the, the back of the line. But the nigga who say got down from the flesh on the hole, you all with that because you have this small mind. And you're not going to be able to hear all those good ideas and all that shit that you need to do until you can't do it no more. And that's what that shit is, man. Uh, so, like I said, it's a learning lesson. And I'm hoping that y'all will take this as artists coming up and understand the only way to go is... You building your fan base, 
dealing with the label at your own on your own terms distribution deal but as far as me saying y'all the reason why i'm popping so i gotta pay y'all a popping fee which is y'all get 10 albums and just pay come on my nigga we not no nah, no nah. know the game study the game or don't cry and ask for motherfuckers help when they they take your masters and your four albums because you want to do a fair now Niggas they ain't on no fair shit. Them motherfuckers trying to make they money. The rap game ain't nothing but the trap game in another building. Um, uh, did the rap trap man? Make sure you hit the PayPal. Make sure you hit the cash out. If you're not on the Patreon, I I don't know what to tell you. We got interviews with Brim D coming. We got interview with Big Body. Um, what is it? We actually about to start dropping music on the um on the uh on all platforms so uh when you go and type in big Face podcast you're actually going to have songs from artists on there um those are going to be different promotional packages um so we'll, we'll get your streams up that way um big big a lot of big shit going on if you're a general on the patreon or even a lieutenant then you definitely know about that um if you haven't seen the 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 whole white girl calling um, her black baby daddy, mother, a monkey, and a nigger. You need to watch that. That's an hour special. We having a conversation about that. Um, go to the IG. Go to the Patreon. It's just too much to even talk about. We working. Get the shit together, y'all. I'll see y'all in a minute. Love, love.